beginning, I will uh, discuss the purpose of the technique and some background and key concepts and how it is designed and some implementation of this technique and then a use case and uh, or practice and do a summary. So let's get started. Uh, first, um, this is the a picture about how uh, different animals uh, look at things, uh, the, the, how their vision system, the outcome of their vision system. And we can see that human have uh, more clear than other kind of animals. And uh, we can see that human vision system can really uh, understand uh, the scenes before them. And, but as before, like hum uh, computer programs, cannot recognize objects and uh, well and cannot do some vision task very well. And what can we do with the human wisdom? Can we learn from human wisdom, vision system to do the, uh, to help com to design computer programs to solve vision problems, to let them understand images and understand the videos. So this is the purpose of uh, convolutional neural networks is inspired by the human vision system. So some people uh, believe that human, human vision, uh, like convolutional neural network is one of the most successful biologic inspired AI. And, act, and uh, uh, actually it is guided by the design of human vision system and other discipline. So like as discussed before by Daniel that or uh, or brain ha or brain has different cortex and like area in the brain and those area in the brain can uh, interact with each other and process uh, the vision information in different ways and finally our brain can have an understanding of the uh, the scene before them and inspired by uh, such design of our brain like people designed, uh, some researchers designed a convolutional neural network to, to do a similar work. And basically it do, in some layer of the uh, neural network, they do convolution and they uh, process it uh, through different functions. And finally they give uh, output as, uh, uh, as another layer and to the, to the final uh, layer of the neural network so that we can understand if it is an object or if it is a category of, uh, of, of uh, things. So to, under so to, be, uh, to further understand this technique, we need to understand some concepts. So the first I will introduce is convolution operation. And second is sparse interaction and the parameter sharing and the pooling. So those uh, techniques, uh, these concepts have a similar uh, ideas in our human vision system. So I will introduce them one by one. First is convolution. So convolution operation um, is one way to uh, average on several measures to reduce the noise in the data. So uh, because uh, our, the visions uh, vision, the input can be noisy. So human vision system have this kind of a similar operation that they do convolution operation. So that reduce the noise in the data. And so in uh, convolutional neural networks, we also do this to reduce the, uh, the noise in the data by averaging on several measurements. So so th this is the mathematical formula uh, to do this operation. And uh, it, ha uh, it is, uh, uh, this is an integral, like it average on a kernel function so that different input gets a weight and then they output the final uh, output. And the next, uh, this concept is called sparse connection. This is also inspired by human vision system. Uh, the, this, the, the connection uh, on the top is sparse connection. And the connection 
on the below is the full connection. So uh, in human vision system, like the connection from the input to the new to the neuron is also sparse. So that uh, we, uh, in C, uh, in convolutional neural network uh, or C, or our neural network is designed by sparse connection. So the input is connect to the uh, neurons that's uh, near to the to its location. And uh, compared and another kind of connection is called full connection in multi-layer perceptron neural network. The input is connect to, to the all the neurons in the next layer. So this is different, but it, like this is inspired by our human vision system. And the, the, another, another uh, feature of convolutional neural network is pyramid sharing. So in the, uh, in the figure above, uh, it is an illustration of that uh, the parameter for each uh, input to the neuron is is shared. They are sharing the same neuron, so, so that the computational uh, uh, burden is lesser because uh, where the each each pair of input and the neuron are sharing the same parameter, and this parameter can be the uh, op can be the kernel used in the convolutional uh, convolutional operation, so that the computation is easier. Oh, next is called pooling, the concept in convolutional network. So um, as I mentioned before that our human vision system uh, at, uh, have different functions, uh, have different areas or cortex in their brain. So that they process uh, the in, uh, the information in different ways. One thing they do is that they process the input, and the output is invariant to the small shift in the input from the previous layer. And this is uh, can be understand as pooling in convolutional neural network. So this is a, an example. So we can see that we have inputs. Uh, for example, in the the plot above so on the top so we have different inputs and it seems that there are di four dif uh, three different values and by pooling uh, this is a, a statistical uh, analysis so that the output can be uh, ignorant to some small variance and can be more similar uh, can they take the main message of the input so it's like we get two different numbers. So we reduced the variant in the, and keep, keep the main message of the input. So now uh, after we understand the, the some key concepts in convolutional neural network, we can take a look at how the neural network is designed. Like this is a plot uh, to show that we have inputs and then we process to the hidden layers, which consists of neurons and we give an output. And in convolutional neural networks, uh, hidden layers can, they need to do several tasks. They need to do convolution. They, redu uh, they reduce the noise and they also do pooling. And uh, they also do pooling to get the, uh, a, a summary of the data, or the summary of the uh, input from previous layer. So after we have seen the uh, big picture, and we can take a look at of how each neuron is designed. This is also inspired by the human uh, neuron system. So a, a neuron, they take the input from the left side and they have a function and uh, it have an output. So it's, it's similar. So taking um, this idea and uh, we, we can design a function that input several uh, input uh, a feature with different uh, value like it was a, as a vector and we have an output for we put it into a function and we have output so it's uh, similar to the neuron to a neuron how a neuron work and uh, so 
as discussed before, that there are uh, uh, convolutional net network is designed to uh, as an analog to human vision system. So it has different stages. So first they do convolution and they have a nonlinear activation system, like some neurons are nonlinear activation and they do and they produce another set of feature and then they put to the pooling and pooling uh, do a statistical analysis and they put output another uh, set of feature and they process it and forward it to next layer. And uh, so here we have seen that the big picture, like we have layers and layers and layers uh, of uh, neurons. And uh, one thing I want to mention is that uh, the neurons, how neurons can, can be connected. And there are uh, some ways to connect neurons. The first one on the top is called local connection. So that the input is connect to the uh, neuron uh, next to it, uh, close to it. And uh, we have convolution, which is used in convolutional network. And it can it, it looks similar to the, the plot on the plot, but we can see that the parameter are sharing. We use sharing a parameter sharing in the convolutional network. And the last one on the bottom is full connection. So it is a connection uh, between input and every neuron in the next layer. And uh, actually there are different ways to to do the convolutional network. One is, so one is called tilt convolution, but the other one is standard convolution. So as I annotated here, we can see that they, are, they share the parameter in different ways. So here is a group of four parameters they are, they are sharing compared to uh, this two. And they, they can also share uh, two parameters uh, according uh, in this uh, this kind of ways. So uh, they are different kind of convolution. Uh, now, and uh, when after we have seen how neural, uh, convolution neural network is designed, we are more, we, we are maybe want to see how it, how to use it because uh, we care about if you can solve our problem. So I will introduce two kind of packages we can use and, uh, but I won't, I, I I don't think I need to go to the how the algorithm is designed, but I want to introduce two main packages that can be uh, helpful to you. One is TensorFlow and one is PyTorch. And those two uh, package uh, have different kind of designs. And first one, uh, the TensorFlow use statistical graph. So it is, you have to design your neural network before you run it. But PyTorch, like you can, uh, it take a uh, dynamic graph, so it can be run uh, like you design and you run it, and you can modify it when you uh, you are in progress. Another thing is uh, we need to uh, consider is parallelism, because sometimes if we can parallelize the computation, uh, it can be very fast. So for TensorFlow. Uh, you have to do some, you can configure some parameters uh, manually, but for PyTorch, you can, you can put a function like uh, before the, the neural network and you can, they can automatically uh, par parallelize it for you. So it can be easier. Uh, now uh, we can, so we have seen that uh, we have the tool and we have seen how the network is, uh, designed, we might want to see uh, if we can use it to solve our problem. And actually uh, convolutional network perform well at object uh, recognition and the image classification. And this is, this is, this plot is uh, one example we can consider. So in scientific publications, we have many kinds, many, many figures. Some are uh, compound, some like this, some are non-compound. So to understand those figures and organize those figures, one task we might want to do is to do the compound figure classification. And for convolutional networks, uh, because it is, uh, it is uh, analog to our human vision system, 
So it ideally it should uh, work for the image classification test because uh, it is inspired by our vision system. So it, if uh, we can use it to try to use it to classify image into classes. And actually I use this for this task is a compound figure classification. And uh, so we can classify if a image a figure is compound and non compound. And uh, actually many t uh, researchers have done this task and we, uh, some uh, team have already achieved a good performance on some public compound figure classification uh, data set. So, uh, is so if you are interested in learning knowledge from uh, scientific figures, maybe you can apply convolutional neural network and uh, use it to solve your problem. And uh, so, this is the, the use case before. It's just one example. Actually, we can do many many things, and you can be creative and. Uh, try to solve your important problem. So one thing some researchers have done is to classify scientific figures into categories. And uh, for example, uh, one of our speaker, uh, Professor White, German West he, and his team have done this for science. They uh, do the DLUG analysis uh, on the uh, scientific figures and see if different disciplines use different kind of scientific figures. And here in this practice, like uh, uh, because we have a 15 minutes uh, activity, so I want to show you uh, my, uh, how to uh, use a uh, convolutional neural network to work on this kind of problem is to classify scientific figures into categories. And I hope that this is a example that you can learn some uh, important uh, skills to use uh, co convolutional neural network to solve your problem. So let me see. So I will I will introduce the code the code and give you a sense of how it was developed and how uh, how to use convolutional network to solve this problem. And uh, and then after uh, my presentation, you can work on this problem by yourself and see uh, if you can improve the accuracy. So now let's see the code. So uh, this is the code uh, that I use to perform chart classification. And uh, actually, I at the beginning I don't know how to do it, and 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 I learn from uh, this website. And I use I modify this code to for my for this problem, and uh, here uh, I I didn't I didn't train the model from the scratch. I fine tuned uh, the one convolutional network, and this convolutional network is called ResNet. So it's a, a strong model that can do well in image classification. So and in terms of fine tune. Uh, as Daniel has mentioned, is that it is we take uh, the the feature engineering part of the neural network, or that we remove the top layer and we use the neural network before the top layer to get rich feature from the image, and then we we use another uh, model to classify uh, or or to solve your own problem with your own top layer and. Uh, so this is code we first because our cluster didn't uh, have uh, those two package installed. We can have we need to install it be, at the beginning, and then uh, we uh, we load the packages. And the one thing is that we have this uh, this this file config. So it specify some parameters like where the data is located. So all the images is located in this folder and we split it to training, validation and test. And then we spec specify like how many classes it is we have in the data and we set uh, the, the patch size. So how, many, how much 
the data you feed in uh, one at once and how many apples uh, you want to train the model and the learning rate and the initial learning rate and this is the file you want to where you want to save it i just save it uh, as the uh, the same directory as the code and you can modify it for uh, if you want to save it uh, anywhere else and also change the bus size and the uh, airport. So, so I, let me continue back here. So we have, uh, we need to uh, import some necessary function, uh, necessary uh, uh, functions and the packages first. And, and, and here I use GPU because GPU is faster. This is, we, I'm, I'm, Checking if it is using CPU, and here I I check how many images do I have, and uh, one thing here is that uh, we need to load the images. But in neural network, uh, we, when we use neural networks, uh, we need a lot of data, and in image uh, analysis, we can tr uh, we can use a technique is called data augmentation. So it can, you put the image, you can rotate it, you can zoom, you can do some uh, shift so that the image is different, but but the but it's still the it's another image, but with the label. So the data you will get more and more data after you do the data augmentation. So if you you can set those parameters. And one thing I didn't do is pre-processing. I want you to try to use pre-processing in data augmentation and see if it can help you. But I think it's a useful technique that you pre-process the image can also improve your uh, performance. So you can try that. And after we set up the data, augment, uh, data augmentation and uh, we need to, uh, uh, we need to, uh, we, we need to, uh, Gen create data generator for uh, the training, validation, and the test. Here is uh, here is the code that we uh, try to uh, load the data and we set the parameters, and and then we can check how many class we have and which which class the index for each class. And here I used ResNet fifty, uh, and uh, it's pre-trained on Res uh, ImageNet, and I exclude the top model and we and we just uh, use this model uh, to generate feature you know way you know since it's just generate a feature for us and we need to design a top model here I used uh, a simple uh, uh, neural network uh, on the top and you can modify it and you can modify the uh, activation function and and the number of neuron and uh, after that, uh, you can uh, you can put you can put the model uh, on the top of the base model, which is uh, ResNet without the top, and you can train it. And but before you train it, you have to specify that the the base model, the ResNet, uh, you don't train the parameters in each layer and then you choose a uh, optimizer that help you to find the solution and then you compile the model and and then you feed the feed the data and and then you can also after you feed the, the model and you can also try to evaluate it so you can predict uh, it on the test data set generate the test data for you and you can see your accuracy and here you can put a URL to the image and, and you can open the image and see what it is. And then you can use this image to feed this image to your uh, model. You can predict it and see which is the category of it. And, and sometimes the, even you reach a good test performance, uh, you might find uh, uh, the wrong prediction. One thing is that because the data is different from the data you find on the internet. Uh, here, I gen the data I generated uh, is, is by uh, Matplab Lab. So it can be different from some images you find in the, uh, in the, on the internet, but there, uh, you can 
improve it through like better data augmentation and pre-processing functions and uh, a better top model. So this is uh, a time, a chance for you to practice how to uh, use some other tools to improve your performance on your own task. Uh, but this time we just do the chart classification, but you can be creative and solve your own problem. So this is activity you need to, uh, you will do uh, next. And I, I'm, I will be here. And if you run the code, something don't work, or you want to change some parameter and it doesn't work, we can see if we can solve the problem. So this is the activity you will do and, uh, and to help you to, to, to practice this. So let's come back. So let me do a brief summary of uh, convolutional neural network. So convolutional neural network is inspired by human system, system but they are not exactly the same. And there are many, many researchers in this, uh, about this technique. They are still working on this and we have new architecture uh, uh, frequently uh, be published. So this is pretty much uh, all I want to introduce and uh, hope you can see the code and maybe you can try to run the code and see uh, what is the performance and try to improve the performance uh, by yourself. And uh, I'll be here and hope uh, what I introduced can be helpful to you and uh, good luck. Thank you, Han. So there is a question in the chat. One person asks, um, what time of pre-processing you applied? Uh, so I, I, there's one pre-processing like uh, on the bottom of code, I put a pre-processing uh, link for the ResNet 50, there is one pre-processing. And uh, so I can show you, so you can try this. This is for ResNet 50 and you can load this and put it as a parameter and see if it can improve the performance. Great. Now, I don't know if, I don't know if we have 30 GPUs, but uh, so I think in your code, you have like a little line that perhaps you can change if it's not running with GPUs. It's because everybody's, all, all of them are used up, but. Oh you yeah. Probably, you can probably change that. We're all running our job right now. We're keeping the GPUs pretty busy. 